zero. This video started at zero. You started at zero. Xerox is an American corporation that sells print and digital document products in more than 160 countries. One, six, zero. I was thinking to myself the other day, why, how, and who started what is one of the most disruptive concepts introduced to society? Numbers. This is what I found. You are watching Disrupt. Bones. And many other artifacts have been discovered with symbols cut into them that are believed to be tally marks. It's assumed these were used to count time, number of days, lunar cycles, and how many bushels of corn Uga Bunga owes you. But the first documented case of something that goes beyond simple tally marks, something that counts zero as a number, is found in the AD 628 Ancient Times bestseller that has a really simple title called it's a book about astronomy, but inside of it, there's a few chapters and verses that, when translated, appear to be rules. Rules that serve as the foundation for positive and negative numbers. As an example, the sum of two positive quantities is positive. In subtraction, the less is to be taken from the great, positive from positive. When the greater, however, is subtracted from the less, the difference is reversed. He also wrote about an algebra concept known as linear equation, saying, The difference between rupas when inverted and divided by the difference of the coefficients of the unknowns is the unknown in the equation. The rupas are subtracted on the side below that from which a square and the unknown are to be subtracted. I don't understand any of that. Okay, Google, what is rupas? Rupas is a word that is used to express matter, material things, aka form in Indian Sanskrit. But when you add zva, to rupa, you get you, yourself, your characteristic, plus form. Zvarupa, the form of self, as opposed to not being anything, non-existent, in a void, a zero. Is the only number that can't be represented in Roman numerals. The ancient Greeks also weren't quite sure what to do about zero. They asked themselves, how can nothing be something? This led them to philosophical and religious arguments about the nature and existence of zero. One to note is this dude called Zeno of Aaliyah, who wrote many seemingly absurd or self-contradictory statements that when investigated, turn out to be true, AKA paradoxes. One of Zeno of Aaliyah's paradoxes is quote, if it should be added, to something else that exists, it would not make it any bigger. For if it were of no size and was added, it cannot increase in size. And so it follows immediately that what is added is nothing. But if when it is subtracted, the other thing is no smaller, nor is it increased when it is added, clearly, the thing being added or subtracted is nothing. Three, two, one dollar was a variety store started by Macon, Doug, and Ray. They had one in Georgia, one in Tennessee, and three in Virginia. Everything in the store was one dollar. Then they changed the name to Dollar Tree, which has over 15,000 stores in 48 states. Now, if you go into one of these stores and you have five dollars of credit, but you want to buy seven things, well, you'll have negative two dollars, negative money, negative numbers. It was an abstract concept first recognized in 150 BC China. It was discovered in a book called Nine Chapters on the Mathematical Art. Inside of it, they used red rods to signify positive numbers and black rods to signify negative numbers. Europeans largely resisted negative numbers until the 17th century when Fibonacci introduced them in financial problems to signify debt. He also developed a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, where each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 5 is 13, plus 8 is, is the legal drinking age in 12 countries, 18 to 19 is the age in 116 countries, 16 to 17 in 20, and 10 to 15 in 2. So all of these countries have decided 
that a specific age is the age at which a human being can make a decision as to the amount of alcohol they can responsibly consume. A rational decision. Rational. Numbers is a concept that dates to prehistoric times. A rational number is a number that can be written as a simple fraction. 1.5 being 3 over 2, 7 being 7 over 1, 0.3333333 being 1 over 3. An irrational number cannot be written as a simple fraction. Pi being pi. The most amount was eaten during the Mableside Farms World Apple Pie Eating Championship in Brunswick, Ohio. On September 13th, 2013, Joey Chestnut ate 4.375 three pound pies, which is equivalent to 35 one eight slices. Now those were apple pies, but there are also pudding pies, bean pies, Dorito pies, and raspberry pies use zeros and ones to display information on a screen, such as the one playing this video. 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 This video is made up of tiny pixels that are told to display three colors, red, green, and blue, at different opacities based on how many zeros and ones are in the sequence. A similar process of yes and no is used to play audio, or if you click subscribe, we've built a lot on the back of trusty old one and zero but we're nearing a point in time where one and zero just won't cut it in electronics. Computers are getting faster, smaller by the year, and before where a bit could be either one or zero, we now need a qubit, which can exist in both one and zero. When these qubits are used in computers, we get what is called a quantum computer, which is a technology that may be 100 million times faster than any computer system currently available today. This date is November 16th, 2020. 161120 if you're from Europe or 111620 if you're from the US or 10011110100000000. Good day. Hello. Have you heard of Metafuflkaj? What? Have you heard of Metaflix? What did you just call me? I was asking if you have heard of the new content platform from the creators of Disrupt, Metaflix. No. It has similar content like that of YouTube, but extended, ad-free, and certified fresh by multiple happy subscribers. Okay. Goodbye. For the price of $2 per month or a cup of coffee via PayPal or CC, one can gain instant access to TV-length original series. Stop it. A three-day trial is available at https semicolon forward slash Stop forward it. slash metaflix.net. Stop following me. Sorry, it's just... I, th I think you're a cool guy. I do not know how to respond to that. Okay, so the meta story is partly you're in a map, you're, you have a map, but it's insufficient and things will come up to disrupt it, and sometimes the disruption is catastrophic. Everything falls apart. Hey, yo, Kuyi David, pen click prime minister. Um, shout out to the disrupt family. Love what y'all do. It's a quick question. Um, do you think that future media technologies will make certain art forms obsolete in the future. Quick example, um, we can take uh, shadow puppets, right? Shadow puppets used to be a very prolific form of art and entertainment because they didn't have cameras, televisions, monitors, what have you. But currently, shadow puppets are pretty much dead. I mean, they still exist, but more as a novelty, right? So in the future, maybe movies will be obsolete for virtual reality experiences i don't know do you think that vr and ar will make current era art forms obsolete in the future or will v or are we ahead enough that the art forms of today will somehow adapt to the future all right thank you very much bless so I, initially i used to take the stance of vr is going to just blow hollywood out of the water 
but I've kind of taken a step back because I think the difference that we're seeing with VR and AR is that it's a medium that allows us, it's almost like a portal to experience the art within it, right? So as before, like you had movies that was a completely different medium than radio or the written word, whereas now you can watch the medium within the medium of VR. Like, you can watch the medium of a movie. You can read the medium of a book, listen to the medium of a podcast or radio show within the medium. So it's a meta medium. So I don't think it will replace the mediums or the art forms that we have now. I think it will only um, make them more accessible, especially when we're thinking of, like, classic art, like, you know, like, Van Gogh pieces or uh, um, art museums. Now we can actually scan those one for one, scale for scale, atom for digital atom, and then make them accessible and distributed across the entire world and accessible to anyone with the headset that jacks into the metaverse, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I do think, though, we should bring back the medium of um, <laughs> of Shadow Puppet. I think that'd be rad. I'm into that.